any idea when that might turn into something bearable? <laughs> Phil, I'm not playing it. I'm just tuning it. Well, do it in the basement. It'll scare away the rats. <laughs> okay, okay. Fish, could I interest you in a new taste thrill I just concocted? No. <laughs> The doctor says I have to stay away uh, from whatever that is. But I went to a lot of trouble. All right, all right. Are you fish? Why? <laughs> I'm Jack Cullen from down the street, and this here is Mrs. Baumholtz, the head of our neighborhood association. Might we come in? Please do. It's so nice to meet our neighbors. Thank you. It's a tradition to come to every new family who moves in, just to say hello. <laughs> hello. Oh, I remember this old house when it was so lovely. <laughs> When was that? When it was empty. <laughs> Mrs. Bommelt owns half the houses on this block. And on behalf of the association, she's got something she'd like to tell you. Right, Mrs. Baumholtz? Who are you? I'm Jack Kellen, the guy who brought you. You owe me three months' rent. Ah, uh, that's just an oversight, Mrs. Baumholtz. Bull, bull, bull. <laughs> the floor is all yours, Mrs. Baumholtz. Oh. Hello. <laughs> I would like to talk to you as a warm, sensitive, loving friend about property values. Here it comes. And that's all I can remember till I've had my shot. That was good, Mrs. Baumholtz. Very good. What did I just say? What Mrs. Baumholtz is trying to convey is that we decent neighborhood people don't want these group home kids loitering about the places or out in the streets after dark, because they're all hoodlums, ruffians, and delinquents. Fish. Phil? I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> you do? Of course. Then you agree to keep these hoodlums in the house? No. They're going to go and come from school like everybody else. They're going to visit their friends, and they're going to stay out on the, on the streets in the fresh air and sunshine. Oh, Fish, that was wonderful. You think I want to be stuck in the house with them all day? It's not my fault. <laughs> All right, everybody front and center. What's the matter, Phil? I have here a formal complaint from the social service department. Uh -oh. Who's been knocking over Mrs. Norkid's garbage cans? Mrs. Norkid's dog, like he always does. Yeah, I don't think she feeds that mud at all. Sometimes I bring him something. Sometimes I bring him my whole dinner. <laughs> That's cruelty to animals. <laughs> Who's been snapping off antennas from the cars? That's kid stuff. <laughs> On to shoplifting. 
Has anyone been taking things from the bookstore? What would I be doing with a book? <laughs> well, what is this all about? Don't you see what's happening, Fish? It's that Mrs. Baumholtz and those neighbors. The kids are getting a bum rap. What? Yeah. And another thing. All the girls at school won't even talk to me anymore. I might as well become a priest. That would be the end of organized religion. <laughs> Mr. Fish. Mr. Fish. Yeah. That's been happening on to all of us. We're being boycotted. Like we was a bunch of grapes. <laughs> it's quite obvious that the entire community resents the group home. I mean, the people are gripped with, with an unreasoning fear. What are they afraid of? They're afraid I'm gonna marry daughter. <laughs> Charlie, what can we do about it? Well, I think the neighbors simply have to get to know the kids better. That could be a mistake. <laughs> All right. Now, my thought is... Hey, hey no thoughts, Charlie. Uh, we, back will you hear me out on this, please? <laughs> now, my thought is that we have a party. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. You're right. It's like an open house. No open houses. If I can get used to them without a party, so can the neighbors. <laughs> oh, Fish, I think Charlie's idea is wonderful. The children will all pitch in. We'll make hors d'oeuvres. I'll bake my special lemon cake. <laughs> we'll invite everybody in the neighborhood. Listen, the only way you're gonna get those people to come is to bustle me. <laughs> the answer is no. Parties cost money. And you have to sit and talk nice with strangers. <laughs> Fish, we gotta do something. I got all the way over to Mrs. Green's house, and she tells me she don't want me to babysit anymore. I don't want little Billy learning bad ways from you, she says. Bad ways? The kid's only six months old. <laughs> yeah. Because of the children, I think we have to make the effort. All right, you can have an open house. All right. All right. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. But if you want to make friends, buy the cake. Hey, that's very good, Mike. I'm glad to see you're showing the right spirit. What I won't do for chicks. <laughs> Loomis! Huh? Look, the company's coming. Look, look, go on upstairs and put on your other shirt, huh? This is my other shirt. Loomis, you're not being very cooperative. Hey, I ain't dressing up for them folks. They don't dig me, I don't dig them. Look, Loomis, I know how you feel. But let me just tell you a little story. You know, there once walked on this earth a wonderful man. He was strong and determined and fearless, even though many people hated him. But no matter what they tried to do to him, he always turned the other cheek. Do you know who that man was? Yeah, Jackie Robinson. <laughs> That's an interesting frame of reference. Uh, Loomis, why don't you just change your clothes as a personal favor, okay? Okay, but I'm always gonna figure you owe me one, brother. Brother? I like that. <laughs> hey, what do you say? Man, look at you. Hey. Do I look like a TV star? Yeah, just like the Pierce Bay Doughboy. Get out of here. What's up? Hey, where'd you get those new threads, man? Never seen them before. I, I keep them in my trunk. And I don't usually wear them unless I think I'm up for adoption. All I can say is I'm really proud of the way everyone is making an effort. Now listen, is there anything about manners that you guys want me to go over with you again? What's wrong with my manners? They got me this far, ain't they? Hey, be cool, man. Company's here. Hey, I'll get it. Give me a chance to try my stuff. Good evening, Mr. Fish, sir. Can I assist you in removing your coat? Get away from me. I felt Victor was just practicing some of the social amenities. Oh. 
thought he was going for my gun. Come on. <laughs> it was just a joke. In these trying times, we must retain our sense of humor. <laughs> Ta-da! Hey, Diane, you really look terrific. You don't think this is too sexy? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Try and get a compliment around here. Hey, what's in there? Olives, and don't eat any. They're all counted. <laughs> Shrimps per niece. For a cop, that's eight dollars a pound. They'll think I'm taking bribes. Fish, you have to make a very special effort when you're an outcast. It's a waste of time, Bernice. You can't change the world overnight. I know people. That's why I don't like them. I'll get it. No, I'll get it. First impressions are so important. How do you do? I'm Mr. Fish, your co-host for the evening. I'm Mrs. Lester from down the street. This is Mr. Lester, my husband, also from down the street. Nice. You live together. Would one of you lovely children take that coat? I'll do it. Oh, well, thank you. And you are, uh... Diane. Oh. Did anyone ever tell you you're a beautiful girl? No. Well, you are. Isn't she, Harold? Yeah. <laughs> but come this way. I'd like you to meet my wife, Mrs. Fish. This is Mr. and Mrs. Lester. It's very nice to know you. Likewise. Frankly, we didn't know anyone had moved into this house till we got your invitation. Oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, let me introduce you to our little family. Uh, Diane, I think you met, and that's Charlie over there, and this is Mike. Mike. And Jilly. Hello. Jill. And Victor. Victor. And Loomis. And Loomis. <laughs> that's Loomis. I see him. <laughs> you see, Loomis is oh, from... Oh, please, you don't have to explain. Thank God. <laughs> You're really very fortunate. We don't have any children of our own. A uh, problem of fertility. <laughs> but even without children, we're not lonely. We have four dogs, three cats, and a baboon. I know your house. I passed it one day when the window was open. <laughs> May I assist you in seeing? Oh, well, aren't you nice? Yeah, and it ain't easy. <laughs> well, can I get you anything to drink? Uh, nothing for me, thank you. I'll have a double scotch. <laughs> Straight up or on the rocks? Straight up. I like it here. Come in, Mr. Jackman. Mr. Jackman, I'd like you to meet my husband, Mr. Fish. Oh, how do you do? What's your name again? Fish. I didn't get that. Fish! Fish! What are you yelling for? I thought you couldn't hear me. Oh, I forgot your name. It's a hard name. Oh, I, I hear you're a cop. Yeah. You know, you and me, we, uh, we got a lot in common. I'm a mailman. <laughs> The only thing we have in common is bad feet. <laughs> How long have you been retired? What makes you think I'm retired, kiddo? <laughs> How old are you? 74. I started when a stamp was two cents. Wait a minute. Why is it a mailman can work till 74, but a detective has to retire at 62? What do I care? <laughs> Mr. Jackman, huh? uh, would you like a shrimp? How old is she? <laughs> there you go, Mr. Liston. Old Factor. Where are you going to be later? Around. Uh, in case I can't find you, where do you keep the bottle? It's on the kitchen shelf. 
Anytime you want, you can come over and play with the baboon. Thanks. Ain't this a nice party? Yes, very. When I lived with my mother near the naval base, she used to entertain all the time. Only she never served no food. Oh. <laughs> well, hello. I'm uh, Johnny Kellen from down the block. Wow, that's really great. <laughs> I got the invitation to your party. Can I come in? Sure. You may have a little trouble getting out. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Uh, excuse me, but um, did I understand you to say that you two were having a fertility problem? Well, that's between us and our gynecologist. No, I, I simply meant to suggest that, that very often a couple has difficulty reproducing uh, due to tension and anxiety. Uh, often a simple course in body relaxation is all that's required. <laughs> Are you kidding? By 10 o'clock, he's so relaxed that he can't even find the bed, much less me. You want one of these celeries? They're stuffed. Oh, thank you. Uh, did you stuff this yourself? How'd you guess? I see your thumbprint on the cream cheese. Uh -uh, they ain't mine, lady. The first thing my father ever taught me was, always wipe off your fingerprints. Okay, where's my daughter? I ain't messing with her. There you are. I knew you were here. Oh, hello. I... Hey, Mr. Keller, why don't you join the party and see what we're all about here? Huh, I know what you're all about. This is a house full of criminals. Would you like some shrimp? Shrimp? Are you taking bribes, fish? <laughs> you see? Uh, Mr. Callan, do you know the Lesters? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're the lady who uh, lives with a babble. <laughs> uh, ex excuse me, sir. Sir, excuse me. <clears throat> do you have a, a bathroom in this house? Upstairs. I'll never make it in time. <laughs> Wonder. Good ah. evening, Mr. Fish. Good evening, Mrs. Baumhaus. Mr. Baumhaus didn't come with you? Oh, no, I'm a widow. I buried three husbands. <laughs> Only three? <laughs> Welcome, Mrs. Baumholtz. Uh, we weren't sure you'd show up tonight. Oh, well, I wouldn't miss it for the world. May I take your coat? Thank you. My, what a polite little girl. She's a credit to our penal system. <laughs> Thank Excuse you. Excuse me. What did I just say? <laughs> hey, listen, everybody. Suppose we make this a real party. Now, does anyone have any songs they'd like to sing? Can you play Won't You Come Home, Bill Bailey? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I know that. Good. Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Oh, 
come, she can't remember what she just said. But she remembers the words to 50 songs. a different part of the brain. I'll never find it. Lovey, Lovey, do you know Beautiful Dreamer? I, I, I'm very sorry, Mrs. Baumholtz, but uh, I'm, I'm getting a blister on my thumb. Oh, shall I kiss it and make it well? I'd rather soak it in brine. It's getting late. It seems I'm always the last to arrive and the last to go. Mrs. Baumholtz is going, everybody. <laughs> Leaving so soon? Oh, tomorrow is another day. I hope so. <laughs> Mrs. Baumholtz, I, I can't tell you how much we all appreciate your coming here tonight. Well, I had a wonderful time. Uh, we just knew you'd change your mind about us living here when you saw the children in their native habitat. Children? What children? Oh, dear. Oh, I don't like them. Keep them away from me, and don't let them come near my house. <laughs> Mrs. Baumholtz, I mean, if, if you feel that way, why did you come? Because I love parties. <laughs> Beautiful dreamer. Did you hear that? After all the trouble we went through. Hey, if I put all my good stuff on, and I ain't gonna wear a tie anymore until I get married. Well, it just proves one thing. Once you get a strike against you, nobody will give you a break. I think I'll become a nun. Hey, what's with all the gloomy faces? We had a party. We had a lot of fun. We all enjoyed it. And one day, real soon, we'll have a party for ourselves. <laughs> all right. Bernice. Hmm? What did I just say? 